This is Infinity Rewatch. And uh, if you missed us last week, uh, which would be weird if you would just jump ahead and, and not play the episode you missed. But just in case, let me catch you up on what happened. First of all, I'm Andrew Fantasia. Hello. Hello, I'm Ryan J. Whitehead, and this is this is actually really good. So I'm gonna let, I'm gonna let you do your thing. All right. Well, it's a it's a little bit of a catch up game because we have to talk about something that happened at the end of last week, where Ryan J. Whitehead, who is a Marvel guru. In fact, I don't think guru is a strong enough word. He is a Marvel Sorcerer Supreme. Ryan J. Whitehead, <laughs> uh, he made a comment along the lines of, uh, I want to you know, know what's going to happen next week. I wonder what they're going to do with this uh, Mega Ultron and his Infinity Stone collection and all that jazz. And you know, basically, you went on to, to wonder and, and speculate on what Mega Ultron might be all about. Right. Right. And, and uh, the Andrew of last week re- replied to you, and I'm going to do my best to do, uh, you know, an impersonation of what Andrew sounded like and how he behaved last week. He replied to you pretty much, no, stupid head. You're not going to do Ultron again. That's not how it works. It's, it's what if it's, it's going to go to someplace else. That's a dumb idea. And, accurate. And completely <laughs> accurate. And uh, yeah. lo and behold, here we are, seven and three quarters of a day later, and I could not have been more wrong, and I could not be happier to have been more wrong, because you, sir, you called it. We got more Ultron, and it became a thing. From we the, did. Yeah. yeah. We got more Ultron. In the end, it was good. In the end, it was it was good, but... I still, I, I, I left exactly where I thought I was going to be leaving with. In the end, I think it's great, but to me, this is going to be an easily forgettable show. Yeah, yeah, that sounds about right. Like, it sounds like it's it's going to be better than we imagine, but it's not going to change the game. And it's not going to change the game, and it's designed, it's designed that way. It's designed that way, I think, because... I think it was a test. I think it was a test to see how people would respond to yeah. what if, and and if if it worked, then they'll be like, oh yeah, and then the, like the next one's gonna be like the big game changer. Like it's gonna be like we got. I think in this one we got Uatu, and that's great. And I hope we see him again in some way, shape, or form outside of what if itself. But overall, I definitely feel this was a test. Yeah, I think you're right. A test is a good word for it. They just wanted to see. Because of how Marvel, you know, Marvel is not Star Wars. And we've said this a lot of times. Marvel is not Star Wars. They don't jump around to uh, a tie-in book, even though they almost promised that once, and then an animated series, and then a bunch of animated shorts, whatever. That's not their style. They're just like, here's these movies, the end. They don't even have, as far as I know, tie-in comics to go with the movies because Mm-hmm. They've, they've got plenty of comics already. And to be honest, I have never read a movie tie-in comic that was anything less than ass. So I'm glad that, uh, or sorry, I should say anything more than ass. So I'm glad that they don't bother with that. Uh, they're just like, here's our movies. And now we have our TV shows, which are just six hour long movies anyway. You're, you're good to go. Um, and now all of a sudden they have this new thing, which uh, they probably didn't know what we would make of it or how they should treat it. So right. it it's a, it's a baby step. They went with a baby step and we, yep. we, uh, we responded. I think I, I feel like everybody, and I could be wrong because I haven't like tested the water. You know, I haven't, I haven't checked the temperature of the fan base, but I feel like everybody feels the same as you and me about what if, where everybody's like, this is a solid show. I'm having a lot of fun. Um, I'm not going to be raving about this show a year from now. But yeah. every week I have a good time. Yeah, and that's it. Like it's, I, it's like going to a coffee shop. Like you know, you're going for your coffee. You know exactly what you're going to order, and nothing's really going to change. The only thing that's changed in this process is that they've added a new type of coffee that you can get. But in the end, you're still going to the same store. You're still going to go get your coffee, and that's it. You know what I would love. A Marvel, or rather, an MCU themed coffee shop. Oh my God! Yes, let's get the licensing right right now. Oh my God, that I want this. Oh boy, I'm already, 
I'm already going bananas yeah. here. This is already something that, that needs to happen. Um, yeah. Oh, for they, they sure. could do like the latte art of like cap shield and things like that, depending on what you order. Um, ooh, this has to be a thing now. Okay. Uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll put that on the back burner. So oh. you're, we are on the other side of the finale of what if it's behind us now it has happened. Yep. It was mm -hmm. a grand finale, a uh, big grand two part finale. Overall thoughts. What, uh, how did you feel going into it versus how you felt coming out of it? Uh, going into it, I'm like, all right, let's, let's see. I actually, so at the time of this recording, the show is a the show has been out for a day now. I didn't actually get to watch it, uh, as I was dealing with some other things. Mm. Um, so going into it, I was like, okay, I need to, as, as always with most Marvel projects, I need to see where this is going. I need to see how this is going to conclude. Um, but once I sat down and got into it again, I was just like, I was just like, okay, like I was at, in that mood of like, get to the point, get to the point, let's get to it. And as the show kicked off, it kind of got that same repetitive nature of like, uh, and they even, they even tease it. Uh, Watu goes and, and picks his Avengers and he's mm -hmm. like, oh, I, I call upon you. And it's like, eh, like, uh, like, okay, I'll live with it. I'll buy it because it's cartoon. It's going to be a little cheesy. But that's the thing. It kind of feels like it's directed to a specific audience. And I'm not, I don't think I am that audience. And that's a darn shame. Because like Falcon, Falcon and Winter Soldier, there were moments where it's like, I felt like I was the audience. Like they were talking directly to me. Yeah. Like the scene where, the scene where, U.S. agent goes nuts and like kills somebody, and it's just like that when it hit that level of storytelling, and it it didn't have to show like ultra violence, but it alludes to decapitation, and you're just like sitting there, like not that I'm like someone who like likes super intense violence, but my point is, is like I I felt like they were, I felt like I was the audience they were trying to tell the story to. Yeah, yeah, and I remember specifically your reaction when that happened in Falcon Winter Soldier. And I think you even said that in the podcast, yeah. you were like this, you, you said something along the lines of this show knows how I feel about these characters and it knows what I'm hoping to see. And it yes. even is predicting some things I don't even know I want to see yet. Yes, hundred percent. Right? Yeah. yeah. And this show, this show, I, I don't feel like I'm that audience and I don't feel like they're talking to me. Like, as much as they're making references, like they're they're kind of dipping their toes into like comic book references. And I, I remember there was one, but I can't remember what it was about. But there was a comic book reference in this one that they they made they they alluded to. And yeah, like as I watched it, the the more and more it got closer to the end, the more and more I'm like, okay, let's just get there. Like let's it's had its ride, it's had its ride, and it's a good story and, and it tells a full story. It does a good job of like tying all the loose ends and making sure it's it's it the the presence put all together to give you to give it to you and in the end it's just like yeah okay you know this is this is what i was what, what i was expecting yeah and it was uh, it was what i was expecting and it also was uh like it didn't hey you how's it going did you like yeah, the finale of what if oh yeah she can't hear me yeah, Isabella, Isabella, what is your feedback of what if? What is your summary? What's my summary of what if? Yeah, the last episode. I don't know. I you kind of had to accept the show for what it was, mm -hmm. which was um, just scenarios. Like it wasn't really leading anywhere, and that was kind of like that was the foundation of the show, and that was the point. You're like, okay, I guess that's kind of cute, but also. What the hell did they do with Killmonger? That was so stupid. <laughs> so dumb to vilify a character like that. I thought that that they would have taken his character and made him redeemable because a lot of people criticized Marvel for taking a character like Killmonger and making him out completely to be the bad guy when a lot of his ideologies were created against an oppressive system. So to take his character again and make him a dick again was just really poor writing, in my opinion. Just putting it out there. And I'm sorry, none of it was too groundbreaking. Whoop-de-doo, <laughs> Captain America's a woman. Okay, I don't know. Like, 
I think they could have done more. That's all I'm saying. Mm-hmm. But it, I mean, it was. It was tame. I, it was what it was. Yeah. You know? Like a bad hand job. You, you know what's gonna go anywhere. <laughs> I love that. That's the best yeah, description. I don't know how much uh, censoring you can do. But that's okay. I'm not censoring a word of that. That is perfect. I, I guess I can enjoy part of this. Yeah. But, eh. He said. He said. I'm not censoring a whole word of that. Okay. <laughs> I, there you go but that that sums it up like yeah. uh, isabel is a good barometer of like as as someone not not as big as a fan of like overall marvel like she enjoys it but it's a good barometer to see like you know exactly that exactly that honestly i i i kind of want to start a second podcast where we just make isabella and anna watch terrible movies and just listen to them <laughs> rant about it after it oh would be yeah the most entertaining thing in the world yes <laughs> it would be it would be the most like critically honest experience and and you you guys will eat it all up as listeners you'll eat it all up oh uh, it would make a martin scorsese movie feel like an episode of the care bears it would be, <laughs> it would be yeah. so r-rated um but the I, I think with what if i think the way i feel about what if right now is it, it's i look at it this way Remember phase one, the feeling that we had in phase one where even the movies themselves didn't have mm. the kind of confidence that, say, phase three movies had. Yeah. Which makes sense because they were still asking themselves, can we really do this? Is this really, can we get these people together and make an Avengers film to tie this all up? So there was that sort of unsurety uh, on their part, but more more so there was like a, a, a lack of certainty on the audience's part where we were just kind of enjoying these superhero movies the way we had been enjoying superhero movies uh, in the, the past decade. You know, the way we'd been sitting through Electras, we were sitting through our Thor ones. And uh, we, we knew that this was coming. We knew they were building towards these team movies, but we were thinking the same thing. What are these movies going to be like? Can they do it? Blah blah blah. You know, it it was such a such new territory. We were mm. Magellans, and we were just along for the ride, just looking for the new world and wondering if it was going to be there or if we were just going to find nothing but ocean. And then we found the new world, and it was fantastic. And we yep. got two more phases of it. I feel like you take the that and the equivalent of that now in phase four, in whatever this saga is going to be called, is the idea of multiverse stories now. Now mm-hmm. the the crossover films are, you know, they are the masters of that. Now, whenever we watch a solo Marvel movie, we've been trained to expect, okay, so who's going to show up? Oh, Abomination is in Shang-Chi. Awesome. Yeah, of course, because crossovers are, are a thing now. We we have come to expect it. So now it's it's sort of in our uh in our in the muscle memory of us as fans. Like we go in expecting, all right, who's gonna show up in this one? Now they have to put into the muscle memory of um, you know this is now going to branch out in weird ways. And all of a sudden, Willem Dafoe's Green Goblin is part of this canon now. And all of a sudden, you know, Elektra is part of this canon now. Maybe, I don't know. And it's such, again, a new world, a new territory. We don't even know if it's going to work right. And what if is just one of those things where they're really playing around with that concept. And I feel like the only way we can really subjectively look at what if and figure out how good a job it did is at the end of this saga to, or at least at the end of like, or like midway through phase five, whatever that is, we can look back and be like, okay, we know where we ended up. Did what if take the right steps to get us there? Um, You know, was it an Iron Man? Or was it a, an Iron Man 2? You know, like what what did What If do to contribute to where the MCU needed to go? And I don't think we can answer that right now because we don't know where we're going. You know, it, it's a good point. And that's just it. Like, and, and beautifully said, too, because we don't know where we're going. And that's why this, the, there's a huge problem with the show. Because... If you base this show in the Infinity Saga, then it makes sense because you're revisiting everything that you're revisiting everything that happened, right? The problem is, and this is it's the Black Widow problem too, 
is I think it came out at the wrong time. I personally think mm. again, like this should have came out personally. This should have came out like right after Endgame because we would have been going off the stint of Endgame and been like, been like, oh yeah, you know this this sucks. You know where where do we go from here? And then that that brings up the question: Well, what if we did this, right? And then it, then it makes more sense. But the problem is, is like we're way past the infinity. Like Loki proved we're way past the Infinity Stones. Like we're way past that. We're, that doesn't even matter anymore. And even with um, even with Captain America, like we're way, we're way past the Steve Rogers era. Like we're way past you know, the, the heroic good versus the, the like, the, 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 the true evil. Like, you know what I mean? It's it's all blurred now. Everything's, like, you know, everything's all all been askewed. And same goes with WandaVision. Like, Wanda, like, Wanda had the Avengers and had Vision. That was their, that was her life. And that got flipped on its head. And WandaVision is, is her dealing with that and moving forward. And the problem with what if was it's not moving forward. And on top of that, it's not really re it's not, it's not going anywhere aside from doing this weird kind of loop. And the other side of it that I had with the show too. And I do remember now the comic book reference I saw. So when he creates the magic armor, it Mm -hmm. was almost as if they were alluding to the midnight suns a little bit, which is like the, the mystical force. Uh, that's where you got your blades. You got your, uh, um oh my god i'm totally stumbling on this ghost werewolf rider by is werewolf Sorry? by night part of that yeah werewolf by night uh moon knight mm-hmm. is also part of that group uh and so on and so forth and so and that's my and that's just my point is like why do the infinity stones when you could have just done like you could have done lilith for example and done like a like you know demons are breaking out like the whole mephisto thing had this been about mephisto and then you hire the hero like you uh, uh the watcher recruits heroes we haven't seen yet that would have been amazing like we would have been all over like we would have been hanging on every episode and then the what if side of it is like okay well um you know what if these characters had to deal with this and at the same time we see them later on like we see we get a taste of Moon Knight, and then we're going to see him in a show. So why why play it safe and give us the same characters in in the same why is the rum gone jokes <laughs> and play them out to such a freaking scale? Like the party Thor throughout this entire episode, I, I was just cringing the whole time. Yeah, he like, was really unfunny. <laughs> like Widow, they did a lot of justice because like it was really interesting to see a widow who like essentially survived like the worst case scenario. And, and she's like this kind of road warrior, you know, still, but still keeping her head, keeping her head cool and like getting things done. And we, and, and it's cool that she's like best friends with agent Carter. Like that was awesome and a great evolution of the character. But party Thor was a very isolated moment that was just blown out of proportion. And I'm all for, I'm all for like, Hey, like, Let's make fun of some characters. Like, let's have a good time. But again, this is the why. Why is the rum gone joke played out way too long? And like, like Thor, we talked. We talked about it at length during this episode. But Thor, I am so tired of the party Thor. Like, he, I get it. He looks like a surfer dude, and he's really <laughs> handsome. And of course, if he's gonna come to you know freaking Asgard while his parents are still alive, he's gonna be like. He is going to hurl a little bit of lightning and people are going to celebrate him as a freaking god. I get it. I get it. I get it. But why is the rum gone? <laughs> I, I, uh, I, I'm, I'm with you there. I did not... Uh, Party Thor's antics were really falling flat for me. Um, and they were forcing it. Like They were, they were really... They were just, really forcing uh, it. They forgot the key rule that Marvel has usually been really good at, which is every character can be funny. And uh, yeah. they, they seems to think that only party Thor told the jokes. So every time he opened his mouth, it was like, uh, and I didn't care for that, but I'm in a different camp from you in the sense that I'm glad we didn't get new heroes here because I don't feel like this is the time and place to introduce people. Uh, I just, like, when, when I see moon Knight for the first time, I want it to be the live action moon Knight. Uh, Cause I've seen what animated moonlight looks like 
already. Have I've you seen, though? I've seen what a draw. Have you? Of night. <laughs> yeah. I want. I want to know. I want to get to know these people. I want my first impression of them to be that. I think what if is the perfect place for alternate versions of people. And I think it's a perfect place to take advantage of characters you can't really use anymore, like T'Challa or, uh, or Steve Rogers, who is now an old man, right? Like to, to do things like that. So I think that's I, their use of them was spot on. I'm glad you bring up the infinity stones. Cause I wanted to ask you, um, the Loki situation of it all with, you know, the TVA having all these stones and, and they're pretty much just there. Uh, one of my favorite moments in this finale was the fact that, um, who was it? Black Widow had that thing that could crush Infinity Stones, but then it didn't yeah. work. It didn't work right. on Ultron Stones because they were meant for her world, not for his world. And so that got me thinking, all right, the TVA is probably the only pocket we've seen besides Uatu who could possibly venture into these other worlds, right? Like the people in the TVA, I think it's safe to assume they've got files on all these different uh, universes. So yeah. are the the different aspects of the stones, do you think that's going to be something that could come into play? Even though I know we've we've seen the stones and we're good, we've had our fill, is yeah. that something that the TVA, at least just maybe only on the Loki show, might be dealing with in the future? Um, personally, I hope not. Personally, I, I, Loki made a big statement. Like, Loki made a huge statement by saying the Infinity Saga was great, but as you can see, we're far beyond that. And I don't... And, and that was another thing. Isabella brought up a good point while we watched it was if if there's different realities with different stones why didn't they just go to another reality get stones and then like deal with them on an equal playing field right like mm -hmm. and i understand like a watch who's not meant to interfere but he did right so yeah i to me again i don't i don't think i don't think that should be the question right like i don't i don't think it should have been I don't think the Infinity Stones should have been an element of it. Or if it was, why wasn't Adam Warlock in the show? Because he was clearly made, a, he was alluded to in Guardians 2, and he has a big role to play with the, the Infinity Stones. So why didn't they have him with, deal with the Watu and then we can experiment a little bit? Like it played it way too safe. It played it, and it, we went to, we went to just some different backdrops, but it's the same story, it's just different angles of it. So I don't know, man. And, and to summarize your question before I kind of loop back to things, I hope they don't. Like I, I, I really, you know, this whole like the, the, the battle of the Infinity Stones. I don't think we need it. We don't need it. No Agreed. One... We're done yeah. with it. Yeah, we're done mm -hmm. with it. And I don't want to play this show on it. I don't want to play this entire podcast on a down note. No. Again, because no. again, like I said, it's like going to the coffee shop. I'm gonna go get my coffee. I, it's part of my process. But I know I'm getting the same coffee, and and that's yeah. and I'm I'm with Marvel. I'm emotionally way past that point. I need to grow. I need to change. I need to see something different. I need to try something different. And and I don't want to be. I don't want to come in and have someone go, "Oh, hey, the usual." I want them to say, "Like, hey, welcome. I know you like this. You should try this." That's what the conversation should be. Do you think we'll see some crossover between Loki season two and some what if characters? I think that they should. I again, this is a good time for like a to play a role in it because because of Loki's journey. Loki's journey is beautiful. Is mm -hmm. you know it kind of Loki left us with this this whole thing of. Uh, of him really questioning who he is and why. And, you know, and to meet Uatu and be able to see that there's different realities and different possibilities, Loki may actually get a chance to see the script and get a, get an idea of like how he can live his life. Because as far as the, as far as the conversation went with him and Kang was Kang could show him in that reality, what the entire story is going to be. But with Uatu, he can not only, he can look at completely different books and actually figure out what it would take to, to be the winner. Yeah. 
and he could, I mean, the the involvement, it seems like whatever the TVA is doing that has them involved in matters of time travel is, it would be impossible for them not to encounter Uatu doing what they're doing. Like, yes. it, it would be ridiculous for them not to encounter Uatu. Um, yeah. And I, I might have to, I want to bring something up that will have to spoil a little bit of the uh, the post credit scenes of a certain movie that's in theaters right now. Oh, uh, here we go. So if anybody is uh, is has not seen Venom, let there be carnage. Spoilers. Spoilers ahead. I'm not saying that you know venom and loki team up in the credits or whatever i'm just saying something happens in the credits that is very similar to something i want to bring up so you have been warned spoilers ahead for venom let there be carnage um it uh, it the, the scene takes place in a hotel room and and uh, the symbiote is telling brock about how the symbiotes have a hive mind and we've seen you know all these civilizations and things like that and then all of a sudden uh, they're lying in this hotel room by the way and it's nighttime and then all of a sudden, like, there's this weird sound and, like, there's the distortion and boo, and then everything kind of blinks for a second. And then they're in the same room, but now it's daytime and uh, the TV is on and they see Spider-Man, Peter Parker on the TV. And um, Venom seems to recognize him. Brock does not, but Venom does. And then... Um, some guy comes in and is like, Hey, what are you doing in my hotel room? So clearly they have jumped to some other universe, um, a universe where it is now day and they did not check into that hotel room. Some other guy did. And I, the reason I'm bringing this up is because of something that was shown to me. And I hope you haven't seen this yet, Ryan, because I really want to see the surprise on your face when you hear this, that has got me asking whether or not, what if has has called attention to a certain thing and it's this this uh this thing was shown to me where if you take the finale of wandavision the final episode and the final episode of loki and you play them at the exact same moment and you start them at the same time the moment wanda becomes the scarlet witch kang stops and says we've just crossed th the threshold it syncs up Yes, I, I knew about this. Yes, I remember okay. it. So I don't know if it's her becoming the witch that has made him pause like that. Or if there's something else and we're going to be seeing a lot of these little, you know, coincidences. But I feel like whatever caused it also caused Venom to end up flipping into this universe. And my question is, did this have anything to do with the watcher interfering in what if uh, or, or or did what if have a moment at least that matched up with it it's definitely possible uh because there's that moment in the episode before the season finale where there's a hesitation where he finally gets peace mm. and then he hears the voice of Uatu, and then he breaks into he literally breaks the fourth wall, if you will. Um, so yes, it's it's definitely definitely a huge possibility that 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 all these events could synchronize and and play play that factor. I don't know though. It it just seems Scar the one division and Loki thing. It's it's one of those things where it seems like a coincidence, but it could be more to that. But adding this extra layer to it makes it kind of almost like. Uh, could Marvel have done that? Like, you know what I mean? Like, and that even begs the question now with Spider-Man No Way Home. Is that, is that the same thing? Like, do all these events all happen at the same time simultaneously? Right. We don't know. We don't know. And that's, that's a good theory. But that's the thing with what if. It's too far out there. It's too circular and also too you know too much of a hypothesizing and not enough like actual traction for the most part but uatu's involvement i think gives it a little bit of it, it tethers it to the movies and the show and the other shows and 
I like, I don't know. I feel like it's very knowing what we know about Kevin Feige, which is not much. I don't know the man personally, but knowing what we know about him, I don't think it's that far fetched to think he's got a big whiteboard in his office uh, with all these plot lines, you know, mapped out. And there's some point on that whiteboard with a big X and then a circle around it that starts this multiverse story and that mm-hmm. that event, whatever it is, um, basically creates whatever this saga's tale is going to be. And I, I'm just wondering if we have seen that moment or if that moment is just something that they are building towards, but they're letting us know it's coming by saying, look at this big coincidence. Look what happens. Wanda turns into this. What's Kang reacting to? So I don't know. I don't know what it is, but I feel like it does exist. I feel like that is up on his whiteboard. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's possible. But my biggest question is with the, the, the whole, you know, Venom thing and the whole Spider-Man No Way Home and WandaVision and Loki. What if, is it like, is what we're seeing? Cause everything's branching out. Right. And like, so in Loki, it was like uh, it was like a band that looked like this, and then ever since the band broke, it kind of went like this. But is it not the fact that all these things are collapsing in on each other, and it's creating all these different storylines to converge and collide? I guess is probably a way. Yeah, I mean, it would definitely it would bring things together that had not been brought together before. Mm-hmm. Because then, because basically what you're telling me from from the end credit sequence, which that little detail about the hotel definitely was not in there, but what it sounds to me like what they're alluding to is he literally woke up in another dimension. That's what it looks like. Um, it's basically a way to address the fact that, hey, remember we had that weird movie where we got Venom, but there was no Spider-Man. It was just brock and that's it It, yeah like it sounds like it was their way of saying hey remember that well now he's in a universe that has spider-man in it and i mean we we got this little we got that i feel was it like a year ago when we got that morbius trailer and vulture was in it so they've been showing us that this is supposed to have a a greater purpose I still don't know what Sony has planned for their Spider-Man universe. It would be nice if they kind of gave us an idea of the pathway the way Marvel does, you know, at least tell us, you know, here's what the next five years look like for this Spider-Man movie universe we're making. Right. Um, but it, it seems like they were going to just have that be a separate thing. And now with this, it's, it's not a separate thing. So I, I'm really, puzzled by it and i really just i can't wait for that moment that'll probably you know not happen for another 10 years but that moment on like some blu-ray special feature where feige's like ah eh? eh? this is the thing that andrew was talking about in that podcast that's right i listened to all of them and i agree isabella we yeah. really screwed up killmonger in that one episode like i i i'm just waiting for that so that I, I, he can point to the whiteboard and show us what it was he should, it, essentially that's what it is right like he has the he has the math formula but we're only dealing with like parts of it you know what i mean mm-hmm. and he's got the key variable that's going to unlock the whole thing um but yeah i don't know i it just the going back to your the whole conver- point of this conversation is like let me let me flip it back to you this way do you think we need more information or more storytelling around the infinity stones do you really think we need it Around the stones? No, I don't think so. I, I agree with you how you, when you said the moment Loki showed us how these people that we are meeting now and these places we are going now, the stones are so irrelevant to them. That was their way of saying, like, we've moved on. We had fun with these. As much as I love seeing those stones together, because just I love seeing those six mm. colors. It just looks nice. Uh, we're We're done, and that's fine. There's plenty of ways for Kang or whoever the big bad is to be threatening without needing those. Yeah. And and they did it perfectly with Kang with Kang being that threatening that like time time is the ultimate power essentially, right? Um 
and that's that's there's still other there's still plenty of other powers that we haven't looked into like the fact that uatu was able to stand toe to toe against a guy who has all six infinity stones like why aren't we talking about that right like, that's it's pretty powerful like considering that like once thanos had all the stones no one could like thor had the had a weapon that could stand up against them mm-hmm. and captain marvel Captain Marvel could also endure, but no one could really go literally toe to toe the whole time. Like it was all about it was all about getting one ups on the guy. Yeah, where Watu was actually able to compete for an entire episode. Yes, and, and I've had a lot of people bring up to me the weird fact that Thanos can show up with five stones. And Ultron with one can just be like and kill him. Uh, and it, I, I don't know how powerful Vision's Ultron is supposed to be, but if if I remember right from Infinity War, we never saw Ultron go face to face against Thanos. So maybe he yeah. could have done a good job of it. We don't know. But yeah, you're right. They, the fact that Uatu is that powerful, it should tell us where this is going because a guy that powerful, a guy as powerful as Uatu who could go toe to toe with super mega death Ultron mm-hmm. was still frightened by the prospect of what could happen if the multiverse is tampered with. It's like the same situation in, in uh, guardians one when they wanted to show off how powerful Ronan was. Yeah. So they, they brought the other who we all, when we met him, he was slapping Loki around and then Ronan just comes and kills this guy with one hit. So that was a way for them to show us like, hey, this Ronan guy, is, he, he means business. And yeah. I think this is the same deal here. Uh, and it's, it's not so much an individual, but it's the threat of the multiverse's safety it being compromised. It's that that they're telling us this is such a scary thing that this guy who could take on somebody with all six stones, even he fears what would happen if the multiverse got messed with. Yeah, exactly. So that, and again, it just brings to the, the the whole point of what if, like, I think the show was way too tame and it's, it's dealing with a subject that we're way past. We're way past it at this point. Like, and that's why like things like Loki is really exciting. Song Chi, really exciting. You know, I'm actually the, you know, with the Eternals, I'm interested to see where it's going to go from here um because eternals is going to be another big one where it's like what you know what what are celestials doing right and and mm-hmm. the power of cosmic like the power of cosmic is is quite powerful uh you know thanos uses it silver surfer uses it dr doom wanted it so yeah show me that like show me where that's going uh, eternals is still such a big question mark to me like what is that going to be how are they going to I, I am so um, like looking forward, not just to, you know, a fun Marvel movie with that, but just looking forward to learning from that, like learning what these characters have to do with anything and how yeah. it's going to affect specifically what we've, like, what we've seen before and what's going to come now. Why are they coming out of hiding? I thought it was going to tie into the end of What If and... It didn't look like it was going to go that way now, you know, seeing, having seen the finale. But uh, I will say about four, maybe five weeks ago, uh, if I remember correctly, and I'll try to reenact it specifically, uh, I did mention at one point that it would be really cool if the final episode of What If was called What If the Watcher Interfered. Yeah. And if I remember right, exactly your tone of voice was like, no, it's dumb. you know you called you definitely called what the last episode be which is what if the watcher broke his oath and that's i i personally feel like honestly he he did it and i don't feel like there were consequences see and i feel the same way that's why i think we will have a better understanding and appreciation of this show when we're farther in like in phase five because I don't think we've seen those consequences yet. And that's the tricky thing when you're writing a story that has a multiverse and B time travel. 
like I get a headache just thinking about what that whiteboard looks like. So I don't think we're going to see the ramifications of him breaking his oath until, you know, at the very least, Eternals, if that's even going to happen there. I don't think we'll be made aware of this. It's, I think I feel like it's going to be like a magic trick. It's going to be like the end of a Christopher Nolan movie where they're like, here's how we did it. <laughs> and we might need to watch them a couple times. We might need to do, uh, dare I say, Infinity Rewatch um, to sort of understand and, you know, have those cool little moments where we're like, oh, my God. Remember in, in Shang-Chi Part 2 when, you know, he walked into that portal and and uh, and and Kingpin was there and Kingpin said, you have no idea what has just happened. He was talking about what happened in What If Season 2, Episode 3. Like, I feel like that's when we're going to put those pieces together and go out of our minds. But right now, we're still looking at a uh, just the end, the edges of a jigsaw puzzle. And we don't know what that middle is. It's still, it could be anything. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It could be, it could be anything. And I don't know, man. Like, it, again, the other thing is now, too, is like I'm kind of going with this feeling in the show of like, well, they've done so many Marvel stuff now. Eventually, you're going to get to one that's not going to be your favorite. Like, it's going to be yeah. like, hey. And I don't want to feel that way. I honestly, with all the Marvel shows like Hawkeye, She Hulk, Moon Knight, Blade, you know, all those ones, like, I don't want to miss a beat with those ones. I don't want to. I don't want to. With what if there was another what if, I would actually debate whether or not debate on whether or not I want to invest my time in it. Wow. Harsh words from Ryan J. Whitehead, everybody. I don't want to feel this way. I don't <laughs> want to feel this way. But to be fair, to be a hundred percent fair is like just like eh. You know what I mean? Like it's like it was good. But it's for, I'm honestly, I'll probably once Hawkeye comes out, I'm gonna stop talking about it completely, unless unless there's something that's gonna tie it into it, which is highly unlikely. Yeah, and I feel the same way. I uh, until we see something where we're like, oh, that's because of what happened and what if. Until that moment happens, uh, I'm not really gonna be ranting and raving about this. But like you said, and I think you're right on the money. They're making so many things. Eventually, something's gonna come out that's not your favorite. I am. I think this is the best possible situation where the thing that came out that's not our favorite is the little animated series that didn't really need to be watched, yeah. right? Because imagine if it was like Avengers Five that we ended up being really disappointed in. That would suck. Like we, right. like, wow, they they dropped the ball on that. So I'm <laughs> glad that it's. If it has to be something, it's the something that's the most off the beaten path. Well, it was weird, too. It was weird, too, for them to have that moment of, like, uh, okay, welcome, Guardians of the Multiverse. And that was such a cringy moment for me. I'm like, ooh, why? Um, But the other other thing about this, the other side of this coin, too, um, is, yeah, it's just, oh, man, I just can't, I can't can't get over it i can't get over it. like uh, here like another side of the coin is is like when killmonger got the stones did you care did were you like oh my god this is gonna kick off something it was such a forgettable moment i was like okay yeah i didn't i didn't care uh one bit you didn't even I, flinch you I, didn't even know nobody i i guarantee i had even with me i'm like okay he's got the stones now Okay, he's got it's like watching a football game where it's it's kind of going back and forth a little bit. It's like, okay, he's got the ball now, he's making a couple of yards, and then oh he's got the ball now, he's fumbling. Like it's <laughs> like, oh my god, just like where are the stakes in the show? Where are the stakes? And I felt the same way to a lesser extent when we got the little mid credit scene where Peggy finds Steve in the armor. Um and I was just like, Okay, that's cute, but that's like that didn't feel like it was leading to a season two. You know, it didn't feel like it was saying, Ooh, we'll see more adventures of captain Carter with it. That just felt more like, um, the, the dark world scene where Thor shows up and kisses Jane. Like it, yeah. it's not, it's not meant to point us at anything. It's just like, yeah, they had a nice little moment. Uh, it's, it's a little exactly. shawarma moment. Uh, and I, I thought it was, it was fine, but, I wasn't invested all that much in Peggy's relationship with Steve on that side. You know, I love the, 
the core MCU Peggy Steve thing. But with those two, I was just, you know, I wasn't really all that. I, I forgot, to be honest, that uh, they weren't together anymore. I forgot that she was, you know, not with him. So uh, I'm I'm fine with uh, with that. And it, it doesn't it doesn't bother me, but it didn't make me excited to see more. Yeah. Uh, so you mentioned the Hawkeye show, which is what, November 19th? When does that come yeah. out? It's like it's yeah, it's roughly around that time. Around there, sure. okay. Yeah. Which means there are a couple of weeks, um, a good like month solid of of no Marvel stuff. A little mm-hmm. bit over a month of no Marvel stuff. But uh-huh. guess what? What? That doesn't mean you have to wait over a month to get Infinity rewatch stuff. Ooh, nope. Because we got something planned for you. Um, yeah, and Ryan, I want to I want to run this by you, Ryan, in terms of uh, scheduling, and tell me what you think of this. I think Hit that uh, we should uh, because it. I think it turned out really well when we did this for Shang Chi. I think we should uh, do this live at your place again. And by live, Hell I yeah. I'm there with you, and we'll release it. Uh, we'll try to have it released around Halloween because of the theme of what we're going to be talking about, mm-hmm. which is. Ryan and I are going to uh, give you our, each of us will have, uh, what, what number did we land on? 10? Was it 10? 10 of them each? It was 10, but it was five each. Oh, five each. Oh, that's much harder. Oh, yeah. boy. Do you want to do 10 each instead? Yeah, we can, oh, 100%. <laughs> right, we can do top 20 if we want to. Yeah. All right, it's our show. It's, it's our right, show. Right? Do whatever we want. Yeah. Let's check with the boss. The boss said it's yeah. fine as long as we get him a picture of Spider Man. Um, <laughs> yeah, we'll do 10 each, and I'm sure we'll have some crossover, but uh, we will be bringing to the table villains that we want to see brought into the MCU. Yeah. And what better time to talk about bad guys than Halloween, which is the spooky season where everybody is a little bit evil. Everybody's a little bit Dormammu this time of year. Uh, I'm, I've been really excited for this for months. I don't know about you, but I have been, Oh, hundred percent. I, I had done my research and everything. I have a, a couple of key villains already that I, I really want to do. So really want to talk about, let's try to predict if we're going 10 for you and 10 for me, let's try to predict how many villains will be shared between our two lists. I'm going to say my safe bet. I'm going to say my safe bet. I'm going to go with the Holy Trinity. It's going to be three. I'm going to say we're three. Gonna I'm going to say three. I think my mind kept going to two. So I think I'm going to go to, I think we're going to have two. Because I feel like, see, one of the ones I have in mind, I don't even know if they count, but I think they count. And I feel like yeah. you you are going to know some villains that I haven't even dreamt of yet. And you're going to be like, Andrew, it's 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 Cornelius. And I'm like, who's Cornelius? And you're like, it's Cornelius, the guy who did this. Uh, so I have a feeling you're going to drop some bombshells that I haven't heard of yet. And I have a feeling yeah. you're going to have some people that I, there's some people I specifically left out for certain reasons. But I, so I think to, Three is a great bet too, but I think we're in the right ballpark. I don't think we're going to have more than three shared. Yeah, no, I, uh, I, yeah, I, I'm betting on, I'm betting on three or more for sure. But like, uh, I mean, cause like there are some key characters they just haven't done yet and they should, they really should have done at least two or three of them by now. So mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm curious to see uh, what this list is going to be like, but I definitely agree. You need to come down here, sir. We got to set up the film studio, i.e. my kitchen slash yes. whatever little <laughs> <laughs> for sure. But uh, yes, that's going to be our episode guys. We're going to have an episode for you. It's going to come out. Yeah. I, I'd say that target about roughly around Halloween for sure. Well, we'll have something good for you guys. Oh, that's going to be a big one. I'm excited. Well, that was the what if finale. Uh, and now, now maybe, uh, maybe they're the executives are talking to Feige and they're saying, what if we made a season two? Um, and I, I think there's already been talks about how if they make a season two, they want to start throwing in some Eternals folks and some Shang-Chi folks, which makes sense. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll be excited, Not, not excited, but I'll be like happy if they drop a season two in like a year and a half, I'll be like, cool, let's see what they got. Mm -hmm. Uh, especially because at that point we'll have an even better understanding of what the multiverse is and how it works. 
But in the if meantime, they do it, if they do a season two, give me Warlock, give me Adam Warlock, give me Captain Britain, give me America Chavez, uh, give me you know Ghost Rider, give me give me something different. Like don't don't give me the same characters and play out the where's the why is the rum gone joke. I get it. Part Thor was a party guy. We get that. Yeah, boo. Move on. You'll definitely get some Chavez action because she's we'll have met her by that point. And we'll have uh Ooh. I like that. Yeah, that's a good point though. She brought up Rocket. We didn't see Rocket in this show. A what if no, with Rocket would yep. be fun? Didn't see Rocket. She called she did have a good call out there for mm-hmm. sure. At that point, we'll also have met the beautiful Kate Bishop. So we might get some what ifs with Kate Bishop. So there's a whole ballpark we can play with. Um, but until that time comes, you're stuck in this one universe with us. So if you ever want to reach out to Ryan J. Whitehead and see what he's doing, where can they do that? You can find me over at twitch.com or sorry, twitch.tv forward slash Xbox Canada. Also, come check me out on Instagram at Ryan J. Whitehead. And also check me out on Twitter at Crusader Online. Ooh. And I am found on uh, the Instagram and YouTube and Twitter sometimes uh, at Andrew Fantasia. And right now, uh, if you've been following my YouTube, you know that I am counting down the seconds to Bond 25, No Time to Die. Uh, 24 hours from now, Ryan, we will be, let's see, we'll be pretty much done the movie in 24 hours. Isn't that? Yep. Yeah, that's insane. I, I can't believe it's finally here. Um, yeah, that's happening. So if you want to, if you want to catch up on your bonds, visit my YouTube channel. And I had literally did a bond movie a day for the past 24 days. You're welcome. Uh, until next time, until next show, until next, whatever, uh, we'll see you again. Halloween time ish. When we talk about the villains, uh, you're going to enjoy that. We have some, some spooky villains to give you that day. Trust me. We're just, I, 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 I'm itching to hear Ryan's list. Um, but I know, I know we're going to have some fun with that. And until then, everybody, please have a marvelous day. Hey, scumbags. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up on our video. As always, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, Rebel Scum Podcast, for all the latest videos.